Welcome to Human Resources Management. This is Lecture 8B. I'm Tom Stevenson, and today we're going to be looking at how to lead an effective meeting. So when we talk about human resource management, there's a lot of meetings that's typically involved in business. And one of the skill sets that will set you apart and make you more successful is how to run an effective meeting. There is a lot to it. There's a lot of things that people don't consider. And it's not that complicated, really, when you get down to it. It's just really fundamental things that you need to do to be successful at achieving the goals for the actual meeting. Um, so when we think about it, we could ask these series of questions. From your experience, what are the factors that lead to ineffective meetings? Provide clear examples. Let's think about some examples that you've had where an effective meeting uh, didn't occur. And I think that most of you will be easily able to remember. I know I can. I can even remember recent ones where I found them to be very ineffective. Identify the meeting behaviors that are most difficult to manage and any tips that you found to be useful in combating these behaviors. We'll talk about that. There's always people that have their own agendas during meetings and they want to try to hijack the meetings or take them off uh, agenda. And that delays things and it can be very frustrating for a lot of people in the actual meeting room because they have so much time to do so much work and then if meetings run over or are hijacked they don't get to the actual topics or goal areas that need to be discussed and it can be very frustrating over time so what i would suggest just uh, you doing is analyzing your points and what can you change to make meetings efficient and effective so maybe you want to hit pause right now and just think over those points those questions and Think about how it applies to you. Also, it's very, very helpful to put yourself in the other per person's position. Um, there's an excellent book. I may have mentioned it before or in class before. I usually bring it up. It's How to Win Friends and Influence People. This book, written by Dale Carnegie, was written in the late 1930s. And surprisingly enough, it still gets on the bestseller list every time they re-release an updated version or a new edition or a new printing. And for a book to last that long, get on the New York Times bestseller list, Globe and Mail bestseller list for books um, is really phenomenal. And the reason it's, it's such a popular book is that it has a lot of fundamental uh, ideas and qualities within it. And one of the main themes is to put yourself in the other person's position, to try to view whatever it may be from the other person's position. If you can put yourself in their shoes and view things from their shoes, then that's very helpful when you are trying to determine how to correct a problem or how to be more effective in dealing with that particular individual doesn't mean you have to agree with them, but you have to be able to look at it. Why might they be behaving this way? Why is this a non-agenda item so important to this person? What can I do to not have it affect my meeting negatively and at the same time still not lose this person in the process? So how to win friends and influence people, that aspect of looking things from the other person's position will be really helpful for you and your ability to manage people, to conduct meetings, to negotiate with people, to sell ideas to people and concepts. These are all very important uh, ideals and ideas that can help improve your ability to be a better manager. So you hit pause, as I said, think about those for a few minutes just before you get enter into the rest of this video. I think it's helpful uh, to sort of get some clarity on that and some of the issues that you've seen around running an effective meeting. And then we'll talk about some of the things that can make meetings much more effective. So let's think about the functions of an effective meeting now that you're back. This defines the project team, the participants, and their roles. It's your opportunity to lead your group. A lot of people just take meetings as meetings and they don't really sort of 
think about them beyond that. And it's really, if you take it an opportunity where we're meeting with the team and we're going to be going over some key ideas and we've got goals for this meeting that we want to achieve and we want to outline and we want to clarify and we want to review and we want to update, this is a good opportunity when this is done well. So it really helps in that way to position your leadership of the team, if it's a project team or business team or whatever purpose the meeting is being held for. Uh, so it, as I said, it, it really is that opportunity for you. And it's often the only place that you get to meet with everybody. You know, if it's a construction project, it might be a site superintendent. If it's a business meeting, it might be with a CFO. You know, whatever the team members are really meeting with purpose and treating this like an opportunity instead of drudgery. How you come across and, you know, what your thoughts are about this it gets absorbed by everybody else in the room or in virtual space, however you're holding your meeting. So some steps to think about to run an effective meeting. And while these seem like they're common sense, they're not all that common. So that's the thing with common sense. Often it's not that common. Uh, number one, why are we having this meeting? Like don't just have meetings to have meetings. Set some meeting goals. And we talked about SMART goals, specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, time-bound. We talked about all of that earlier, and this is a good opportunity to use it. When you're developing agenda, make sure that you've developed a set of goals for the meeting, and that will help you to better define the agenda. And if you have no goals for the meeting, then maybe reconsider whether you need to have this meeting. Keep the meeting as short as possible. There is no point making the meeting longer than necessary. So you want to keep the meeting as short as possible. Set the time that you know can work. So if you think an hour is enough, make the meeting an hour. And if possible, finish early. If you think the meeting is going to be an hour and a half, don't make the meeting for an hour. People get very upset when they're told the meeting is an hour and you drag on and on and on. That is really a negative kind of environment. I recall not that uh, long ago at uh, one of my meetings at George Brown, this is probably about last October, we were having like a program meeting. They were reviewing programs and there was this uh, manager from another division and they were coming in and they were going to explain how this process was going to work and they allocated one hour for the meeting. Well, about an hour and 15 minutes into the meeting, 15, I noticed that they weren't even a third the way through the agenda. I noticed that the agenda wasn't really being followed and it just seemed to meander in every direction. So I thought to myself, I'm not gonna sit here for another two hours while this goes on. So I just packed up my stuff, put it in my knapsack, got up to leave and the person asked me, where are you going? And I said, oh, well, I'm sorry, this meeting was supposed to be over uh, 15 minutes ago. I have other meetings I have to attend. And I just left. Uh, I asked one of my colleagues how long it took, and they said it was about another two hours. So that person would have been much better to try to set, set up the meeting to be three hours and then finished in two hours if they'd followed the agenda and been clear and ran it properly than to run it extra long. Uh, and now all my colleagues, they were not very happy with having to sit through that long meeting. So keep that in mind. Uh, so don't set time short and run long. Key point, remember that, and that will help you for sure. I've never once had somebody come up to me and say, Tom, you said the meeting was going to be an hour. It's only 45 minutes. How come you're finishing early? Never. And if it does occasionally, for some reason, that's like one in a thousand. So I wouldn't worry about it. So that's, it's much better to do it that way than the other way. Make sure you have a clear agenda. Detail the points to be covered. Ensure the participants are aware when they need to prepare for the meeting. So if there's items in the agenda that participants need to do stuff for, make sure that they are aware of that so they come prepared. They're not caught off guard and it's run very well that way. That's good for them, that's good for you. 
right? Because if they're prepared, then it will go much more smoothly. Give them an idea of how long they have during the meeting to do this bit of uh, work and make sure that they don't run long. And if they run a little bit long, then try to run other parts of or adjust other parts of the meeting to correspond. And so that's that is helpful and set up each agenda item or conversation so everyone knows the intended outcomes. Also make sure what you're trying to accomplish, make sure there's clarity on that. It's much better than just having an agenda item, but why do we have this item and what are we trying to accomplish? That ties back to the SMART goal aspect. Make sure that the agenda is distributed to stakeholders at least 24 hours prior. And of course it needs to be distributed a lot earlier than that if you're expecting people to come prepared. So I know people that send out the agenda like 15 minutes before the meeting and then when you get there, did you read the agenda? Like we're all sitting around waiting for this agenda to arrive. So the earlier the better. If it can be six days before the next meeting, that's even better. And then you can always resend it a second time. So when we are running a meeting, we can think of this as uh, what we're, that was what we would do before the meeting. Now during the meeting, if the meeting's supposed to start at eight, start at eight. I've had lots of situations where even I go into other cities to do some consulting and that, and there's supposed to be somebody coming or I'm doing a, pre I'm doing a training program and they say, oh, Charlie's stuck on the freeway. Can you wait for Charlie 15 minutes? I don't want to wait for Charlie 15 minutes. Charlie didn't get up early enough or plan the day long enough. I got 15 people in front of me. I'm not going to make 15 people wait while Charlie's stuck on the freeway. I'm going to go through what we need to do. If we need to add Charlie to the end of the agenda or we need to catch him up later when he arrives, that's fine. So start and finish on time is very important. Ensure the agenda items are covered and not sidetracked. This is one small bullet, but it, it takes a lot of skills to manage meetings effectively around this. There's always people that will be in your meetings that have their own agenda. They don't like your agenda. They have their own agenda. There's certain things they want to discuss. So you can solve this pretty readily. You can have an other items at the end of the agenda. So you got a space there. Maybe if it's an hour long meeting, you leave 10 minutes at the end for any extra questions or uh, agenda items that people may want to bring up. Or if there's somebody that wants to hijack the meeting, take it over on some you know, personal uh, concept or point that they're really, really closely involved with and it's meaningful for them, sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't, then when that happens, uh, you can ask them to, we're gonna take this, uh, Side uh, outside, we'll take this after the meeting, we'll put this aside, and you and I will discuss this after the meeting. So in other words, you've taken that, you haven't said it's not important, but you've taken it and you put it out to the side, and you and that individual can discuss it after the meeting, uh, if it's not something that would fit in the other items area, or if it's just something that's between you and them, then you don't need the rest of the participants to be uh, dealing with it, or if it's you, them and one other person, then the three of you can take it offline after the meeting. So also make sure someone is taking notes for minutes. You want to you want to ensure that people, uh, the minutes, what was discussed in the meetings is detailed and you want to make sure when there are tasks to be completed and things to be done that people are assigned to those tasks. So if you're in the middle of the meeting, you say, Josh, uh, are you going to handle this? And Josh agrees that he's going to handle this. You want that in the minutes because then you can follow up. You can see how Josh is doing uh, and you can follow up the next meeting uh, to see how Josh is doing. If it's something that needs to be followed up sooner, you can do that. Or if it needs to be on the following meeting. Otherwise, people will start to realize that if you don't hold people accountable for these items, then Anybody can say, yeah, I'll do it. Yeah, sure, I'll do it. Nothing's being tracked, nothing's being monitored, and nobody's following up with anything. So you might as well not have these meetings because nobody's doing what they're supposed to be doing. Whereas once you have minutes and it shows accountabilities, people's names beside it, and you follow up. If it's something that needs to be done in the next few days, you follow up before the next meeting. If it's something that can wait till the next meeting, 
you might want to ask at the next meeting, Josh, where are we on this? And you know what, if I'm Josh and I didn't do it, I don't like being called out in the middle of the meeting that I didn't do it. You know, you might say, Josh, uh, uh, as to the minutes, uh, where are you on agenda item number 25 that was in the minutes? Then we'll see what Josh has to say. After a very short period of time, Josh knows that when his name is on something, he better have it because he's going to be held accountable for it. You know what? It gets everybody doing things. Also, if I'm Josh, I like to know what I'm accountable for and what I'm not accountable for. There might be something else there and it's like, oh good, I don't have to deal with that. Uh, Marianne is dealing with that. That makes a very uh, positive aspect of Josh. He knows what his uh, important items are maybe urgent important maybe you're important not urgent because he's got some time to do it right uh, so he can better plan out his priorities and his time management you also want to uh, engage participants and seek input often the most knowledgeable people sit quietly and i think i've got a later bullet on this uh, but you want to figure out how do i get people engaged how do i how do I make sure that the smartest person in the room isn't just sitting there quietly? Uh, there's a Saturday Night Live quote uh, by Lorne Michaels uh, that when he was being interviewed one time, and I think he said something to the effect that sometimes they're putting together this live comedy show every week. And so they do all these skits and they need the comedians to really sort of participate. And he said, it's amazing how sometimes the smartest, brightest comedian is the one that's quiet. Uh, they're introverted, even though on stage you'd never know it. Uh, and so sometimes you have to sort of figure ways to draw them out and engage them. And once you engage them, it's like all this flood of great ideas comes out. So you don't want to be in a position where the smartest person in the room is sort of sitting quiet and not fully engaged. You want to try to figure out ways to get them engaged. Maybe it means before the meeting you, you give them a little heads up that you're going to ask them about something because you know that they're the, the person on it or you would like to hear their input on it and you may call upon them in the meeting. Uh, there's different ways you have to look at the person's personality. Uh, if they're really introverted, you might have to come up with different ways so you don't put them on the spot all of a sudden. So, but you definitely want their engagement and that will help build the team. You don't want somebody that's really good at the soft skills of just talking, but really not saying much content wise. You want to really engage everybody that way that has good ideas. Uh, so yeah, and close the conversation uh, towards the end of the meeting to ensure there's an alignment clarity on the next steps. So that's kind of like a recap, you know, these are, the, these are the items that we covered, and we covered them for these particular reasons with our goals. And to meet our goals, these are our next steps that we need everybody to take. So it's kind of a review, a reinforcement, and it also helps to remind everybody that, yeah, you held this meeting, you had an agenda, you covered the agenda items, you now have accountabilities. This will help us as a team reach our goals. And that reinforces the positive aspects of how you run your meetings. So that can be really, really helpful from uh, that perspective of having success in managing your meeting processes. And of course, after the meeting, we want to make sure that we uh, send out meeting minutes as soon as possible. So I know lots of people, they send out minutes. Again, it's like the agenda item. They send out the minutes 15 minutes before the meeting. You arrive at the meeting. Did everybody read the minutes? I didn't even know the minutes were sent out. There were 15 minutes ago, I was on my way here and I wasn't reading my phone while I was driving. Uh, follow up assignments. Make sure if you're supposed to follow up, you did follow up. That's holding those accountabilities. And that sets the routines, the habits, the rituals of how and the culture of how you run this business, how you run this department, how you run this division, how you run this project all flow the same way. They're all important that way. Uh, things that aren't being addressed, follow up directly with the individual person uh, separately if need be between now and the extra uh, meeting and include updates in agenda for any subsequent meetings to assure accountability. So the other thing I would also say is at the start of the first meeting, try to establish a time that you're going to meet with uh, the group uh, ongoing. If it's a project, let's say, and it's a two-year project, 
it's really good to say, okay, so get everybody on board. We're going to meet 7.30 Thursday mornings. And then maybe somebody can't do 7.30 Thursday mornings. So then you work it around. You say, okay, 7.30 on Wednesday mornings. Everybody can meet on 7.30 on Wednesday mornings. Block at the same time. Like the habit ritual routine aspect, when people leave their house at 6.30 on Wednesday morning, they know where they're going. After about three or four weeks, they don't even have to think about it. Somebody asked them to make an appointment for Wednesday morning. They already know they have a meeting. There's little chance of their forgetting about it. That's the consistency aspect. That sets the expectations. We know that we expect you at this time and it's consistent in the process. So again, we're talking about how things tie together like we've been talking about earlier in the course as well. And these are all very simple things. But surprisingly, they're not done that often uh, consistently. Uh, some parts are, some parts aren't. Just remember, this is your time to lead the team. And this will set a lot of value that the team has towards your leadership and how this company is being run. So hopefully I'll give you a good sort of uh, perspective on how to successfully run the, the team. And uh, with that, I think I would just take a few minutes and think about what is it that is required for you to run the team effectively and run a meeting effectively and the points on that and how you can utilize that. Also, compare and contrast that with some meetings, like I said in the beginning, that you've seen that were not run very properly. And what could be tweaked? What could be changed? What would have made a difference for you in that meeting? Try to put yourself in the other person's shoes why are they not that good at meetings? What is, what is driving them? Maybe they're disorganized in other parts and they don't have time to prepare. Uh, preparing for a meeting takes time, takes some effort. Uh, it's like giving speeches in a lot of ways. You have to put in the legwork to do it well. But when you do it well, you reap the rewards. So that's what I wanted to cover for today. We'll talk about this more in the lecture. Tom Stevenson, wishing you a wonderful day. And I'll see you soon. Bye for now.